let's go look at this excavator. All right, here she is. Let's see if we can get this thing loaded up. It's missing the idlers up here. We do have the tracks. So we're gonna try to see if we can get this on the trailer. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a little scary. Alright guys, we got this thing loaded up here. It was a challenge because a lot of the stuff is kind of sloppy and some things just weren't working the best for us, but we finally got it up here, so it's good.
hey guys welcome back so i just picked up this mini excavator got this thing off marketplace so this is a nissan n-150 mini excavator it also goes by a couple other different names mini giant is also on there and it also is the same machine as a hanix i guess that's how it's pronounced there's actually a, a bunch of different names for this particular machine so I got a pretty good deal on it. I only paid $2,000, but it does have a lot of issues. There's a good bit of play on the bushings. This thing is all taken apart and in pieces. A lot of these covers are off. There's a lot of slop in these joystick controls. The front window here is busted out. So it has 3,402 hours on it. So, the main issue with it is the tracks. So the tracks have good tread on them, but they are pretty dry rotted. And there's also a pretty big split right here on one of them. However, the idlers are another story. The bearings are completely shot on them. As you can see right here, this is the remnants of the bearing. This one is still held together, but the bearing is completely gone. So we either have to get new assemblies or replace the bearings on both these idlers. So one cool thing about buying this is it did come with a lot of literature. Um, so here's the machine we have, the N-150 and but ours has a cab on it came with the parts catalog which shows you all the seals and parts that we need um, there's a bunch of receipts here but one interesting thing is they did replace the final drive motor paid two thousand six hundred and eighty dollars for that and that was back in 1998 so it does have a new final drive on it so it comes equipped with a Mitsubishi three-cylinder diesel engine. This is a K3B diesel engine. Go ahead and check the oil on it. And it's got some, it's pretty black. So yeah, it looks like this thing hasn't been serviced in a while. Looks like the air filter was replaced at 3,200 hours. Yeah, that thing is pretty dirty. Go ahead and check the coolant on it. Coolant looks really good. So there's a lot of issues with this excavator. I don't know if you can see in the video, but basically when you push this blade down, the cylinder is leaking either internally or inside the center pivot because this blade won't stay up or down. So we'll have, to, we'll have to rebuild a lot of these cylinders as well. This one is leaking pretty good. You can see how much fluid has leaked. And it's like dripping right now. And I don't think when I lift up on the bucket, I don't think the cylinder is supposed to move up and down. <laughs> so I'm hoping the cylinder bore is okay. I definitely need to get some seal kits ordered for this entire machine. These seals are shot. And yeah, that thing is dripping. As you can see, there's a lot of oil on those. So I think first things first, let's go ahead and lift this machine up so we can start working on these idlers and also get this machine pressure washed and cleaned up.
So it looks like the previous owner took these grease fitting things out. Let's get this cleaned up, put them back in there. So these allow you to tighten the tracks up by pushing on the idler wheel. You sure don't make it easy. Big clump of old grease. So all these bottom rollers do seem to be in good shape and they spin freely, so that's that's really good. Alright, let's go ahead and get the seat out of here. Let's go ahead and remove this weather stripping in glass because I already cut myself on it once. Go ahead and take this window out as well. That way I can have a little bit more working room in here. So this thing does have a heater, but in order to get this bottom plate out, we got to remove it. Because our coolant, which does look really nice and clean. So now we can see inside here, and it is absolutely filthy. I mean, there's old pine cones, there's some old rubber pieces, and some bolts. Who knows where that came from? So in here, you can see all our valve bodies. Basically, whenever you move the lever, this moves the valve body. Yeah, it opens up the lines in order to activate whatever you're using. And 
these wires look like they're all the same color so they're not labeled so I'm just going to use some of these color coded zip ties more pine cones. Like they had some two by sixes in there holding the battery. say that is a whole lot cleaner no more grease everywhere still not perfect but at least now we can actually work on this thing so this is one of the reasons why I like to clean everything before I work on them because it exposes areas like this you can see right here that this frame looks like it was actually cracked at one point in time and it's been welded over so I did get a little bit of moisture inside this gauge cluster, so let's take the cover off and get it cleaned out. All right, 
right, so all these wires are just a jumbled mess. So let's go ahead and see if we can straighten all this stuff out. So originally I was going to rebuild these old idlers and just replace the bearings and seals. However, I could not find these seals anywhere. So that's kind of what stopped me. I could get the bearings, but not these, not these seals. So I found a company online, I believe they're in the UK. Each one of these idlers were $188. I thought that was an absolute steal. And also, this great 36 inch grading bucket was like less than $300 with the pins as well. This thing is really well made. Gosh, the cutting edges, it's really thick on this thing. And the pins look really well made. So I really think I got a good deal on it. All right, we just got these idlers in. Let's go ahead and get them installed on the machine along with the tracks.
right, so thankfully all these idler wheels are really good. I don't see any play in those. We made it in here pretty easily. The blade just kept falling down, so we're gonna go ahead and rebuild all those cylinders first. Seemed like the tracks held up just fine, and the final drives seem to be working pretty good as well. You can see some of the dry rot in these tracks now, and this is the major break right there. These tracks still have cables going through them. I'm hoping they still can get some life left out of them because these treads are pretty good condition. All right, just got a bunch of parts in. These came from Riley Plant Spares, all the way from Great Britain. They are not a sponsor, but I am very pleased with the whole experience dealing with them. And they had pretty much all the parts that I needed. I got a bunch of bushings, seal rebuild kits for all the cylinders, bunch of pins, some motor mount bushings, some new bucket arms. And the prices on this stuff was actually really reasonable. Another bucket link. We got a whole mess of pins, some bushings. I also ended up getting a new swivel valve. Now these swivel valves are a couple thousand bucks and I want to give a huge shout out to the guy Darren Riley over there. He sold this to me for pretty cheap, only 150 bucks. I was just going to buy a seal kit for it, but he ended up just selling me that instead. For 150 bucks, I couldn't turn it down. He just said it was new old stock. Yeah, there's the part number from Japan. So as you can see, this cylinder is just pouring out fluid and it is leaking it all over. It's got to be changed out. So let's go ahead and get these cylinders pulled off and get the seals replaced. Yeah, that plate is definitely it's definitely got some grooves worn in it. Those are pretty wore out as well. Thank you. 
Pin's got a little bit of wear on it. It's hard to really tell how bad it is. These can kind of be deceiving on how wore, they, wore out they are. Seems like a lot of the wear is actually just in the, the arms themselves, so I'm glad I got new ones of those. Wow, <laughs> that bushing just kind of fell out. So I am glad that I got new bushings. Wow, those bucket ears are just completely wallered out. Oh, and the bushings just kind of seem like they just slide out of the bore here. And there's a spacer in the bushing. So it actually looks like this dipper arm is slightly bent. You can see this plate is straight. And then there's a big gap right in here. And it might have actually broken because they welded this plate here on the back. I'm going to go ahead and just cut all that stuff off anyway. So you can see a lot of the play is actually not in the pins and bushings, but in the actual boom arms. And you can see the movement, but there's like, the pin seems pretty solid on there. I guess it was all the paint or something that was holding that thing on there. So on this pin, there's like no movement up and down on these bushings, but when I move it over here, you can see right at the end, there's a little bit of wear. Put it in here. That's where the play is coming from. Even
I think it's got a lot of mud in it. Somebody actually tried to cut that pin out at one time. guys now this is what is called the king pin and you see we have some play that is going this way and now we'll go ahead and check the up and down play on the king pin and you can see it is it's a pretty good bit it's not like super bad I've seen a lot worse but that is pretty bad There's a little bit of wear in that bushing. Not a ton though. You can see on the pin right there, there's a little bit of a lip, so, so that's that's wear right in there. You doing? In a little bed? Hey, buddy. You're a good boy. You're a good boy. So it actually looks like this, what I thought was like a washer. It looks like it, it was supposed to be welded on here. I think that's where the welds lined up. I'm guessing those welds broke and this thing was just kind of spinning on here. I'll probably see if I can get another one of these made up or just weld this one back on there. By the way guys, I don't know if y'all can hear all the cicadas everywhere. I do apologize about that. They are absolutely everywhere right now. I mean, just on the shed here, you can look and there's like tons of them just all on the post here. And all these little holes in the ground, those are all from cicadas. I mean, just here in the shed floor, I mean, we have tons of holes all from cicadas. So they're pretty bad out right now. All right, let's go ahead and empty these cylinders out. Something here. All right, 
let's try this. really don't like using pipe wrenches on these cylinders because they kind of mess up the, the gland in here but I don't really have a spanner wrench either. First looks at it, it doesn't look all that bad. I don't know why I was losing so much pressure. This was the the dozer blade cylinder. I really thought this thing was gonna be just completely demolished, but it really doesn't look all that bad. It's not in these seals here. I'm hoping maybe it's on the the swivel joint. So I am glad I got a new one of those. I mean these seals actually look like they might have been replaced so the cylinder bore looks to be decent as well I actually see where there's honing mark still on the on the sides of it seals really don't look that bad almost like they were replaced not too long ago see they're actually still pliable I'm gonna go ahead and replace them anyway easier I really don't think this one has been rebuilt like the other one has because these seals are in horrible shape it looks a little bit different but not by much so I'm just noticing that this thing is actually loose already It's already loose on there. So this thing is not wanting to come off. You can actually see where the wrench was pushing in the middle right here and deforming it. So I ended up cutting some new slots right here on each edge. Let's put some heat to it, see if that helps. made things worse but let's give it a try. tried everything I cannot get this piston end off I've tried heating it 
I've tried everything it's just it's too far gone so this is gonna go ahead and go up to a machine shop I'll get them to cut this off and machine a new one of these piston ends hopefully that works out I guess let's go ahead and start on some of the other cylinders if I only had a lathe Oh wow, I didn't even have to put a breaker pipe, that thing is super loose on there. These cylinders have been very inconsistent. So upon further inspection, it looks like we have some issues. So we can see that we have some cracks on this bucket link. We have some right here as well, along the back side also. However, this other boom cylinder looks to be in pretty bad shape. You can see it's got a lot of scratches on it and marks. It is really messed up. But the main issue, is that this rod is bent so when I put a straight edge across it there is a pretty significant gap under it so it looks like they either picked up a rock or something and bent the cylinder and you can see that is straight and there is a humongous gap on this end I'm gonna be looking to fix that other cylinder where I can't get the the piston off of it but also I'm gonna take this cylinder in and uh, probably get a new rod put on it I might have to end up buying a whole new cylinder. I'm not sure just yet. It also looks like I'm going to need some new pins that I did not order. This is the main boom cylinder pin, which is actually this cylinder with the bent rod on it. And that is pretty wore out right there. There's a couple other small ones that have some grooves worn them also. Alright, so this thing's all cleaned up, however, when I pulled this thing out of here, I was moving the house back and forth just to kind of be able to wash uh, certain areas under here, and it just didn't seem right. It uh, kind of felt like something was in a bind, and you know, I also don't have the weight of the boom and bucket on here, so it really kind of just felt weird. So I started looking here at the drive motor, and I started moving the house back and forth, can you see the movement on that motor? Right where it mounts to the plate there. There's just like a little bit of play on that motor. But I think that's causing it to get in a slight bind. So in order to really work on this thing the way I want to, I think this whole cab needs to get pulled off.
Hey, buddy. Was that fun? Was that fun, buddy? <laughs> He's like, no, that was stupid. <laughs> all right, so we got this cab off. And it, it worked all right. An old boom lift lifted it up. So here's what this thing looks like without a cab. Now, it should be a whole lot easier to work on. So we'll have to get this plate pulled back off in order to get to the turntable motor. I was thinking about going ahead and just pulling this engine so I can kind of freshen it up. I mean, for the most part, it looks all right. There's no real oil leaks or anything like that. But there is still a lot of dirt and glass, I guess, when the front window broke on it. So honestly, I've been kind of thinking about just keeping it this way and without a cab. The thing is, I'm down here in the south, and it gets really hot during the summer, and we don't really have that cold of winters, so I don't really need a cab. And also, I'm pretty I'm a pretty tall guy, so fitting through that door is uh, not the most comfortable thing. And I just kind of like how easy it is to work on like this. Now I will put the hood back on it, and uh, you know, put the seat and everything back on it, so it will. And also uh, building like a ROPS, you know, like a safety ROPS for it. But, uh, you know, once all this stuff's put back on, I, I think it would look decent. There's actually two versions of this excavator. There's the cab model, and then there's the model that I'm talking about without a cab. I'll see if I can show a picture of that. One other thing is I'm going to paint this machine, and I haven't really decided on the colors yet. I want to get rid of the yellow. I do like yellow, but I, I want something different on this machine. And I don't know if I want to go back with uh, teal green and dark gray, like on my other machines, like on my other excavator, or if I want to go with this orange uh, factory color and like maybe dark gray around the bottom or black. I really haven't decided yet. So if you guys have any opinions, uh, please post in the comments. So I think this video is getting pretty long enough. So in part two, we'll go ahead and finish uh, all the hydraulics, uh, getting the boom and all that fixed. I did notice that there is a crack right here in the frame when I pulled the cab off. So we'll get that fixed. This thing still needs a ton of work, but all that will be in part two. Until then... I always appreciate you guys hanging out with me and fixing up this old mini excavator. And I will see you guys in the next video. So y'all take care. Later.